Hello and welcome to Think Python, Chapter 1, Part 1. If you are following along at home, you can always use this link, thinkpython.com slash nb, to get to the notebooks. NB stands for notebook. So if we click on that link, it will take us to the home page for Think Python. And this page, Blank Notebooks, gives us the notebooks for each chapter where I've removed the code. So we'll have a chance to type along, and I think it's worth doing. I think you learn more by really typing the code. So if you go to chapter one, we're going to click here to run chapter one on Colab. And that loads the notebook. Now what you get here is a copy of the notebook that I have in my GitHub repository. If you want to keep a copy, the first thing you probably want to do is press this button, copy to drive, which will make another copy of the notebook and put it in your Google Drive. So you'll have a copy to keep, and any work you do in the notebook will, will persist. It won't go away when you're done with the notebook. Starting at the first cell in the notebook, this is a text cell that contains some information if you want to buy a copy of the book. There's a section here that reminds you uh, there's an introduction to Jupyter Notebooks. So if you're not familiar with Jupyter Notebooks, I'm going to suggest that you click on this link, go work your way through that notebook, and then come back. But if you come down here and select this text cell, and then go on to the next cell, this contains the first piece of Python code we're going to look at, and you don't need to understand any of this yet. This is some code we need in order to download thinkpython.py, which is a file I wrote that has Python code in it that we're going to use in the notebooks. When you download it and then execute this line of code, which is an import statement, and we'll get to that later, it imports this code and changes the behavior of Jupyter Notebook in ways that I think it's going to make it just easier to work with. So to run this code, you can either press this play button or hold down shift and press enter. And that'll take just a few seconds to start up the notebook and download the file and import the code that I wrote. Now, I'm not going to read the book to you, but I encourage you to take some time to do some reading. We're going to dive right in with the first section, which is about arithmetic operators. So if we write 30 plus 12 and then hold down shift and press enter, it will compute the value of that expression by adding 30 plus 12 and the result is 42. The minus sign is the operator that performs subtraction. So if we write 43 minus 1 and hold down shift and press enter, the result again is 42. All of these answers are going to be 42. It's a reference to Douglas Adams' book, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. To perform multiplication, the star operator is the operator that does that. So we're going to do 6 times 7, and the result is 42. And finally, to do division, we're going to use the forward slash operator. And uh, the division that we'll do is 84 divided by 2. And the result now is still 42, but notice that it is 42.0. And that's because there are two kinds of numbers in Python. There are integers that represent whole numbers and floating point numbers that have a decimal point and uh, often a fractional part. And most of these arithmetic operators, when you add two numbers, you get an integer. When you multiply two integers, you get an integer. When you perform division, the result is a floating point number. If you really want an integer, you can use another operator, which is two forward slashes, and that performs integer division. So if we do that same operation again and use two forward slashes to divide 84 by 2, the result is 42, and that's an integer 42. The other name for integer division, it's sometimes called floor division, because if you have any remainder, the remainder is discarded, and so the result gets rounded down, that is to say, toward the floor. So 85 divided by 2 is exactly 42. The other arithmetic operator that we'll use is exponentiation. So, for example, if you want to raise 7 to the power of 2, so you're squaring 7, 
the result is 49. And this is one of the cases where when people are coming from another language, they'll sometimes write seven and use the caret operator to try to do exponentiation. In Python, there is a caret operator and it performs what is called a bitwise operation. Specifically, it does the XOR operation. I'm not going to explain here what that is other than to say you can read more about it. And if you accidentally use a caret, for exponentiation, you might get a result you didn't expect. Okay, so everything that we've been executing so far has been an expression. So if you have a collection of operators and numbers like 6 plus 6 squared, 6 raised to the second power, we can evaluate that expression and it'll tell us the result. And notice one thing that happened here is that the exponentiation happened before the addition. If the addition happened first, it would be 6 plus 6, which is 12, squared, which is 144. But instead, the exponentiation happens first, so it's 6 squared, which is 36, plus 6 is 42. And that's an order of operations that you might have learned in a math class at some point. Exponentiation happens before multiplication and division, and those happen before addition and subtraction. So just as another example, if we write 12 plus 5 times 6, the multiplication will happen first. So that's 30 plus 12 is 42. If you write something like that, 12 plus 5 times 6, and what you intend is for the addition to happen first, you can use parentheses. So if you put the 12 plus 5 in parentheses, that'll happen first, and then it'll get multiplied by 6. So that's 17 times 6, which is 102. So every expression has a value. When you type an expression and then evaluate it, the result is the value of that expression. In addition to the arithmetic operator, there are also some functions that Python provides for working with numbers and other types that we'll see soon. So for example, the round function takes a floating point number like 42.4 and rounds it off to the nearest integer. So in this case, 42.4 rounds down to 42. If we had given it a slightly bigger number, like 42.6, it would round up to 43. And notice the syntax here. We have the name of the function, which is round, and then a number or an expression in parentheses, and that's the number or expression that's going to get rounded off. Another function that we'll work with is the absolute value function, the absolute value of a positive number is just the number itself. So the absolute value of 42 is 42. And the absolute value of a negative number is the positive number that has the same magnitude. Now, notice something here, which is that Colab, as you are typing, will sometimes pop up a documentation of the function. So in this case, it's telling us that the abs function returns the absolute value of the argument. Now, this is an example where it's using a vocabulary word that we haven't seen yet. The argument is the expression in parentheses that we're giving to the function. When we call a function like this, it's called calling the function, uh, and an expression uh, that calls a function is a function call. Now, along the way, I want to show you some of the common errors that people commit, and we'll see what those error messages look like. So, for example, when you call a function, you need to put the argument in parentheses. If you don't, if you write something like the absolute value of 42 and execute that, the result is a syntax error. And we get a message here that says the syntax is invalid. And there's a little caret there that points to the part of the line where the error occurred. One other error that might happen is to leave out both the argument and the parentheses, if you just write the word abs by itself, that is actually a legal Python expression. It is the name of the function, and so the result is a value that indicates this is a function, its name is abs, and there's some more information here like x, which is the name of the argument, 
and the forward slash that I won't explain right now. So that's it for the first part of chapter one. We'll come back in the second part and talk about strings.